My name is Bailey Hansen. Um, I live here and teach here in Malbukic, um First Nations in Crown River, Newfoundland. Um, I am the senior high science and math teacher. Um, and I also coordinate the adult basic education program that we here we have here at a school that uh, we teach adults in the evening. Mm -hmm. We do follow program the, the mm -hmm. provincial curriculum because, um, well, eventually all of our students are going to go to post-secondary and most of them do go within the province. So we want to mm -hmm. keep them on par with the province. Um, and that's what we do follow. Um, and we have a, an understanding with the Department of Education and stuff like that. So we get resources and use all the same textbooks and all that. Sometimes we can adapt it um, how, you know, we would like um, to include our, our culture and our values and stuff like that. Ecosystems is such a broad topic and it is through the curriculums, right? Through, especially, well, all through the grades, really, you touch on some mm -hmm. form of ecosystem. So um, elders play a great part in being able to explain how an area used to be and how it is and how our ancestors used the land mm -hmm. and be able to compare it to what the kids are used to. That's something that I've been working with um, closely, I guess, is one of the things that I oversee along with everything else is a development of that coastal monitoring program and more specific to our area. Um, right now, we're just focusing on grade 10 science, so science 1206, um, but there's ways that it can be immersed in other curriculums as well, so mm -hmm. eventually it'll be, but right now we're just focusing on that one there. I just had a workshop on it. Uh, like two weeks ago so <laughs> yeah in this in the province of Newfoundland they're trying to um all science curriculums are trying to put more emphasis on oceans and oceans learning because well, we are an island we're surrounded by the ocean and you know there's so many job opportunities out there for young individuals if they want to pursue something in that and just to be to be familiar with it there's not many kids this day and age that are you know, I used to um, that type of environment and, and understanding. And not like we, you know, we go back 50 years, like everyone was a fisherman or knew a fisherman or, or fish themselves. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Is that is the culture has changed mm -hmm. and just getting them back to understanding that. And there was a need and that's where that Oceans Learning Partnership came out of and then specifically the Coastal Monitoring Program. So. It's done in partnership with DFO, and um, there's lots of other uh, supporters, but yeah, DFO is one of the bigger supporters for that, and Memorial University. I teach, um, well, I coordinate, and I teach the math, um, and we do, in the evenings, we have three evenings a week, and uh, we get students come in, and they usually sign out, we'll, we'll post it out to the community, and we, we have about eight students this year. Um, working on their up upgrading to get their high school equivalents. And um, I must say, I really enjoy it. It's, um, it's kind of like a breath of fresh air instead of teaching <laughs> high school students uh, because these people are so eager uh, to get the work and want to do the work and, and get it done, you know, that mentality. Mm -hmm. And, like, sometimes what high school is sometimes like pulling teeth, right? So... But yeah, it's a it's a nice contrast, and I really enjoy it. Um, before I taught the math and was coordinator, I used to teach the science, and the same thing. I, I found it really um, enjoying and and give you kind of like um, I don't know, make you more humble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I tell my little girl, I said, "Mommy's gonna go teach night school to adults," and it's very admirable that they've come back to finish it. Right? You can't you can't knock them there. So. Yeah, very it's really rewarding. good. Yeah, exactly. It's very rewarding and it's something that I enjoy. And I'm glad that we keep that program here in the community. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And again, we work closely with um, the Department of Education and the coordinator that they have in there. And we're always, I'm always emailing her back and forth and getting direction and making sure that we, we follow the same as the rest of the province. So, mm -hmm. I think it, it just incorporates. Well, you know, you have your education, but it just makes it, it's rounding of a person, I assume. I, you know, it's it, you teach not only academics and stuff, but you teach life skills and cultural and, you know, 
we do, well, I don't do a whole lot of it, but I plan to. Um, but a lot, of, we're in this beautiful area that we can do a lot of land-based learning. And um, I'm in development now with, um, it's a coastal monitoring program, um, specifically for science, to be able to take students down to the beach and look and mm -hmm. identify different organisms and compare the ecosystem on the shoreline and eventually hopefully be able to get out in a boat and see a more um, marine environment and compare the two that way. And it's right in our backyard. And then we can bring in, well, what did our grandparents do down here? And um, what was the fishing like? And, you know, all that things that we can tie in there with our where we are and historically in our culture and all that stuff. I can comment on what I've seen um, as, well, I'm a fairly new teacher. I've only been teaching for six years, but the language program has, especially here in our school, has done leaps and bounds from when I was in school. Like, you ask me words in the language now, I could probably have a handful of of phrases and names and you know it came to five and stuff like that but the kids now like they're having full-on conversations and like it blows my mind and to see that progress is only going to get better you know what I mean so that's one big thing for me is the language seeing that revive is nice this is tied in with everything. Yeah, exactly. It's like if you don't have language, you don't have anything really, right? So, and, and, and while just being more, I guess, culture aware, we are very culture aware and very culture based here, but just always more of it. You can always build more. And like I said, myself, I want to see myself do more land based mm -hmm. learning um, outside, especially now that we're getting settled here so we've only been this our second year so um within 10 years I'm, I'm sure i'm gonna have lots of good things to do <laughs> and so i have a good plan on what to do so that's my hope and just build on what we have already which is a great great thing because you can you can go down and you can talk about uh, the weather that particular day look at all the different um, aspects of weather you can look at um, you know just look around and see if there's any pollution or you know how do we affect that environment mm -hmm. and you know that's like the social aspect of it all and then you you know you compare the ecosystem you look at that so that's the science of it and you know you can get your coordinates and have your you know compass and so you know you get your geography tied in there mm -hmm. too so you know you can really find learning in anything you know what I mean that's what that's what I think and you know if you approach it the right way you can almost teach anything from it you take away some kind of lesson from it something that's more fluid you know what I mean? It's nothing that has to be structured and be, this is indigenous, you know, it should be more fluidic and, you know, it has culture and it has land base and it has academics and it has all these things tied into it. So it's, it's, it's fluidic and, it, and it's hands on and it, and it reaches the kids on so many different levels. That's, that's what I see it as. It, it, it's fluidic.